Um, I will turn the lights off now so you guys can actually see the projector now that it's relevant. Um, so this is, this is the Blackboard Learn setup. Um, again, I have all the syllabus stuff linked um, in this little syllabus and more tab. I was a little hyper when I made this, so there's like a lot of exclamation points and things. Um, but so here's, again, your syllabus. Um, if you need it, there's like class-specific folder and assignments. So this is going to be, it has your syllabus in it again, but this is like all of your assignments. Um, it has some examples of previous work, uh, other random files that might sort of be relevant. Um, general info is just my sort of weird Google Drive. This has like pretty much all the information for every class I've ever taught. If you guys ever want to go back and like reference, you know, previous PowerPoints, anything like that. Um, there's also a little bit of info about caching, um, some free resources. You know, if you're at home and you don't want to use um, if you don't have Premiere, like you could use alternative free video editing software, that kind of thing. Um, there's also a bunch of Maya hotkeys and menus, outside tutorials, which I, I've neglected that document a little bit, but there's still some old stuff in there if you guys are interested in it, et cetera. Um, so that's pretty much like the Google Drive. Um, and I, I did mention the, this is the YouTube where I purge all of the sort of class recordings that I do. Um, so if you ever need to reference them, you can find that link there. Uh, and just more uh, student examples from previous work. Um, that's Learn. Here's all your assignments. Um, this Learn was being a little bit strange when I was setting this up, and it wasn't. What are you doing? Click the button. What you... Have we lost the internet again? Uh huh. I love the clicking of buttons. It never works. All right. Um, I'll check back on that later, but all of your assignments should be up. Um, all the due dates and stuff should be up already um, so that you can find here if your link is working, which mine is not. Um, and I, I'm trying something a little bit new. Hopefully, it actually works. Oh, hey, assignments. Um, so sort of organize them based on like what the, the assignment is. Um, so like all of your stuff for the final uh, will be you know, submitted, or like the information is there. This is being incredibly slow. Um, but like your robot build, so like your model, your textures, your rig, all of that uh, info will be here. And basically, there's just links under each assignment that will take you to a Google Drive uh, with more information about what's actually required for that submission. Um, there's also a group sign-up sheet. So if you guys know who you want to work with uh, for your final project, you could theoretically sign up now if you want to. Uh, I've just sort of made a bunch of random groups. Feel free to rename them. Like I said, I was really Gave them all really strange names because I was kind of bored while I was setting this up. Um, but yeah, so like here's your assignments again. Like the final will take you, um, this will take you to a Google Drive doc, which has information on it. Is anyone else's internet being like crazy laggy or is that yes. just mine? Okay, yeah. fantastic. It's probably just like was dead and now it's alive and now everyone's on the internet. It's like, my God, why? I'm not awake yet. All right, anywho, we'll have this open. So again, syllabus stuff, assignments, late penalties, resubmits. Great. Um, so for those of you uh, that have had me before, um, you know that I usually offer some kind of extra credit. Um, for this class, I don't think I'm doing any explicit extra credit assignments that are just sort of like random standalones. Um, but there are going to be a few point, or a few ways like on other assignments where you can sort of acquire extra points. Um, it's like there's a sort of nice extra thing you can do on your rig if you guys want to set that up. Um, I'll give you some extra points for that. I'll probably throw in some kind of extra points for like audio if you want to like, obviously like prioritize your animation. But if you you know have time and you want to go back in and add some like foley and nice audio uh, to your final, that'll be another way that you can get some extra points. Um, I've not actually written the, the docs for that yet, but I'll get to that and put them up at some point. Um, but basically, these are like you're never going to be penalized for doing extra credit, um, and any points are just added on to your extra grade. So theoretically, if you do like super awesome in the class. And you do like every possible uh, extra credit opportunity available. You could conceivably get over 100 points. Uh, unfortunately, in the grading schema, that still is just an A plus. But it's the principle of the thing. If you if you want to come out and be like, I got 103 points in Anim 2, ha ha ha, uh, you can do that. Um, that goes. Um, but yeah, so these I don't really have any set deadline for. It's just sort of like if you when you want to do them, um, submit them before grades close. Uh, and you are welcome to do resubmits on the extra credit. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm doing something a little bit strange this quarter um, where I'm kind of, 
instead of doing something where I'm like, okay, this week everybody has to have like all of your environment models done, and like this week everyone has to have this other specific part done, I'm kind of letting you guys direct how you do your own, like how you manage your own time and like when you work on things. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do is, if there's no set thing due that week, like I do have like your rig is due this week, your models are due this week kind of thing. Um, but if there's no like specific assignment due, it's gonna be like one of these sort of work in progress assignments where basically you're gonna submit whatever you've been working on that week. Uh, so there's I think five weeks in the quarter where I'm not assigning like a specific thing to be due. So there's five of these little work in progress assignments. Um, I will be dropping the lowest two scores from this. So basically you have kind of, you can do kind of one of two things. You can either not submit anything for two weeks uh, and just sort of be like, I need to work on other things for midterms or like whatever. Uh, or you can, if you didn't do as well on like one week as you hoped, you can do another week and then if you do, if you score better, it'll drop that lower grade. Um, so you can kind of approach those two different ways, but um, I'll kind of go over these probably more later, but basically it's just sort of submit whatever makes sense to submit. So like if you've been working on texturing, <laughs> submit some renders of whatever texturing you've been working on. Um, I do have uh, some more like specific guidelines, which I'll go over later um, about how to submit those. Um, I did do a weird thing where I set them up as journals in Blackboard Learn. Uh, so they'll still pop up under the regular assignments tab, but the, the format is a journal entry instead of an assignment, and that's just because of the way that Blackboard Learn forces me to try to calculate grades. Um, so you should be able to just sort of like make a post and attach documents like you would normally. Um, downloading them on my end to look at in class might be a little weird, but that's pretty much what those are. Um, so I'll go over these, like I said, a little bit later. Um, I do have like a sort of assignment schedule down below, so hopefully when I get to that, it'll make a little bit more sense. But any, any questions on that um, for now? Okay. Um, other thing to note about these is since these are just pretty much like hardcore like work in progress assignments, um, these are actually due, what am I saying? Sorry. Um, uh, this was worded terribly. Um, Okay, uh, so these are, if you submit these late, um, I'm only gonna set them through three days after class. Uh, and that's, again, just because it's a work in progress assignment, um, you should be kind of working on stuff as you go. Um, but yeah, all right. So attendance, um, this is pretty much how it works for attendance. Um, you do have one excused absence per quarter. If you, obviously if you're ever sick or like in the hospital or something like that, like please let me know, I will excuse that because I can't, I don't know, if you need to go get medical treatment, go do it. Um, Drexel policy, three or more unexcused absences will result in an automatic failure from the course. Um, also, if you arrive more than one hour late to class without like a valid reason for it, uh, I will count you as absent because that's kind of crazy. Um, and if you could, it's a little bit easier in this room, I guess, but if you, if you do uh, pop in late, please let me know. Uh, otherwise, I might not count you for attendance and sometimes I'm like, so focused on what I'm doing, I like legitimately don't notice people walking behind me, which is insane. Um, but yeah. So note taking, please take notes. Again, I also have video recordings, but I don't know. Do what you need to do to remember things. Um, there will be, this is gonna be kind of a crit heavy class. Um, so especially for like the, the stories and stuff like that. So just remember like if during critiques, everyone, you know, just wants everyone to do the best uh, job possible that they can. Um, the purpose of critiques isn't to, you know, smash people down and like just berate their work for no reason. Like everyone is trying to give you constructive criticism to make your work the best that it can be. Um, it's also really good, not only for the person doing the work, but for the people giving the critiques. It gives them a chance to look critically at other people's work, um, think about uh, ways that it can be improved, sort of like build their own, um, okay, sorry. So many typos. Um, but it, okay. um, it gives them a chance to develop their own eye. And also, I, know, I don't know. I know this is true for me. If I stare at something for too long, I like can't see any of the issues in it. So having other people with fresh eyes look at it is like colossally helpful. Um, but yeah, so crit is a thing. Um, I probably will be more insistent that people talk during crit 
Um, and if nobody talks, I've taken to just sort of like choosing random names and being like, speak. Um, so if you want to avoid that, say things at times. Um, all right. So here's the grading policy. Um, I'm not going to go over this like super crazy a lot, but this is basically just like the point breakdown of whatever your point grade is going to translate to a letter grade, and the letter grade is what counts for the um, on your transcript. Um, this is just sort of a breakdown of like basically like what qualifies as an A or a B or a C. Um, so if you guys, I'm not going to read through this because I feel like it's here and nobody wants me to read through that, but it is here if you want it. Um, here is the Drexel course calendar. So like any, if there's like any holidays and stuff, I'll let you guys know. I think there might be one this quarter on a Monday. Um, but that tells you like when the last first and last days you can like drop classes, withdraw from classes, that kind of thing, holidays, etc. Um, it also will let you know like when finals are. Um, all right, and the academic policies, which I'm going to skim through very quickly. Plagiarism, don't do it. Yeah. Um, and then here's more information um, for like course adding, and dropping, withdrawing, students with disabilities, that kind of stuff. Um, pretty much all linked here. I'm not going to go over it specifically right now. All right, so here's the weird assignment schedule I've worked up. Um, before we get to that, are there any questions on anything we've gone over so far? Yes? So do you, is homework due the night before or like right before class? I, it's due pretty much like right before class. I do, my first quarter when I was teaching, I was like, I'll do the 24 hour thing and everyone hated it and I hated it. And I'm like, this is terrible. And I'm like, I download stuff and I don't look at it 10 minutes before class starts. Why would I make it do 24 hours? But yeah, so it is due pretty much when class starts. Okay. Um, but yeah. All right, so this is um, sort of the official assignment schedule. It should be up to date. Um, but I've just sort of gone through and listed what the assignment is, how many points it's worth, and if it's like an individual assignment or a group assignment. Um, so this is kind of the. I guess I'll update this if I change due dates and stuff throughout the quarter, but this is just sort of like the master organized list of when things are due. Um, so you do, you will notice like there's this weird, who are you working with for the final, which is literally just like submit their names to me in Blackboard Learn, like it's nothing fancy and that's due on Friday. Um, like this Friday coming up. Um, and I just want to make sure that like you have time to actually talk with your partner and do the, do the rest of the assignments and stuff. Um, so you'll see this is kind of like where I have these little work in progress assignments. Um, so if there's nothing else like super due that week, um, like especially like week seven, uh, week eight, week, or week nine and week 10, um, that's kind of the self-directed thing where it's like work on whatever makes sense to work on. If it's you know room models, do that, submit whatever you have. If it's animation, work on that, submit whatever you have. If it's some weird combination of all of those things, submit whatever you've been working on. Um, and I'll kind of, again, I'll go over the grading for that later, um, but it's basically, they're worth like four points each and it's just sort of like, does it, it, you know, have you, has whatever you've done that week seem like a reasonable amount of work? Is it like well executed? Um, or does it look like you just sort of went through and spent 20 minutes like doing a really awkward keyframe like right before class to have a submission to, to hand in? Um, so this is again kind of like where everything is. Um, any of these like bold assignments, I have like a little color key up here. Um, green stuff is things that I will definitely be going over and reviewing in class. Uh, and bold assignments are sort of major, major like non-work in progress assignments where there's like other specific assignments in Learn or like specific assignments set up in Learn with like submissions that you need to make for that week. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, cool. And then you'll just sort of notice that like under finals, there's just a crap ton of things that you could submit. So I'm not actually requiring like room models, room textures, or the robot texture to be done until finals week. Um, so that's kind of just, again, work on it whenever makes sense for you to work on it. I know not everyone likes working exactly the same way. Um, the other thing is if you guys do want to, if you're like, cool, it's week four, I'm done my robot texture and you want to submit that, by all means, go for it. Like make that submission in the, um, for the robot texture, I'll grade it early. And if you guys are, if you guys want to do that where you like submit an assignment like super early and I grade it, I'll pretty much just let you do resubmits up to the, the final grade. Um, so if you're kind of looking for um, some feedback, maybe see like what kind of grade I would get on this if I you know, left it and didn't touch it, um, submit it early. And again, I'll, I'll look at that and you guys can make changes or do whatever. Be like, ah, sweet, I got 100, awesome. 
Um, so that's the sort of assi like official assignment schedule, like when things are due. Um, I also have another thing that I added in, which is like the suggested schedule, where if you don't know what to work on, this is kind of like what I would recommend doing, um, so that everything is sort of done in a logical fashion. Um, so I did a lot of stuff for like week six and week seven, where there is those work in progress assignments. Um, this is again, if you're if you're efficient for something to work on, this is kind of like the order that I would do things, um, or sort of, you know. Like there's a lot of stuff doesn't really matter, but sometimes things do matter. Like obviously you'd want to fix the rig issues if you know that they exist before you start working on your final animation, um, wherever applicable. So like stuff like that, um, just to sort of, since I'm not enforcing any kind of official schedule, I'm just sort of like suggesting one to you guys in case that would be helpful. Um, all right, that's pretty much the syllabus. Are there any questions on that? Sweet. All right, um, let me, give me five seconds, uh, just pull up my notes, make sure I didn't miss everything. Um, all right, other work, PowerPoints, work in progress. All right, cool. So I think that's everything. Let me s I was like, let me see if Learn is working again. And then it's like, no. <laughs> um, yeah, this is uh, real slow. All right. Cool. So I'm just going to ignore that for now. Uh, all right, so now that the syllabus stuff is done, any questions on that, work in progress assignments, et cetera, before we sort of jump into what the final actually is? All right. I was going to do a break, but we're half an hour into class, and that seems somewhat excessive at this point. Um, so since I can't get to this and learn, give me five seconds to pull it up on the Google Drive. Uh, Anim 212. Oh, now it works. OK. <laughs> Nobody likes learn. All right. So like I mentioned, uh, and like most of you probably know already, um, the core assignment of this class is the robot theater. Uh, basically what this is is an original story or animation with original robots that you have created. Um, it is a group project with two or three people to, to a group. Um, what I've done, if Whenever Learn decides to function again, um, you'll notice that I've set up all the groups to have two people in them. And I think there's one with a three-person group, because I think you have a, an odd number of people in here. So if you want that three-person group, jump in, claim it early. Um, otherwise, it's pretty much just two people per group. Uh, and I am just keeping it two people in the same section, uh, just because it, it makes my life way easier. Uh, so requirements for this is basically uh, 30 seconds minimum for individual projects, which this is not. This is sort of like a holdover from, from previous classes. Uh, for each additional person in your group, it's an extra 15 seconds. So basically, a minimum for this class is going to be at least 45 seconds long for an animation. And if you're in the, one of those three people groups, it'll be a one minute animation. Um, if something goes wrong, so like I know every once in a while, like for CGI2, I think it was with the group projects, um, I had a few groups where people. Uh, dropped the class and like basically ended up leaving people to work sort of alone on a project. Um, should that happen or should it, it seem like that might happen, um, the, I will sort of drop the requirement back down to 30 seconds for you guys, but like also be thinking of ways to still make the story cohesive and make sense uh, if there was like some certain scenes that you could maybe cut out, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, normally it is, like I said, 45 seconds minimum for these assignments. Um, other requirement is no dialogue. Uh, so you can't do any kind of like silent movie text card, speech bubbles, subtitles, whatever. Um, if you want to have like a robot sort of running around being like making angry bleep bloop noises and like looking angry, like that's totally fine. But you can't do like er bleep bloop bleep and then like have subtitles at the bottom. Um, I'm just like now I'm like, ooh, but there's like so many really funny things that you could do. Um, I'm also thinking of like, there's like the, if you guys have seen Wreck-It Ralph, like how Qbert talks, that was kind of cute. I'd be, I'd be open to stuff like that if it's not like actual like written text, if it's just sort of like, you know, like exclamation points or like things like that. Um, but no like actual words. Um, all right. So this is not so much a requirement, I guess, but uh, each person is responsible for modeling, texturing, and rigging at least one humanoid robot. 
uh, which means that if you have a two-person group, you will have two robots, at least two robots, in your final clip. If you have a three-person group, three robots, and each person, again, uh, is modeling, texturing, and rigging those robots separately. So that is like an individual grade. Uh, you will just be submitting that stuff individually as you work on it. Um, the, so here's the fun thing. Uh, if someone is, for some reason, unable to complete a model or like get a functional rig of their robot, you will be forced to use Skelebot. Skelebot is hideous, so get your stuff done, or else you have to use them in your final. Um, and I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that if you guys wanna do additional robots that I don't care if they're humanoid, non-humanoid, whatever, uh, I am totally allowing that. Just watch for scope creep. Um, it's kind of one of those, I'm kind of weird and loosey-goosey with the like, if you all want to try crazy weird stuff, go for it. Because uh, that's pretty much the only thing that I did when I was a student. I just kind of like went crazy and I was like, let me try crazy things. So I'm totally open to you guys doing that stuff and I'll help you the best way that I can. Not good at Houdini. I have no idea how to use it, just for the record. Um, but just know that like, if it turns out really terribly, like I will grade it as if it turned out really terribly. Um, so just like kind of decide you know, what you want to do and how you want to divide up your time for that kind of thing. Um, and then each person uh, for the final is kind of going to do approximately half the animation or a third of it, depending on how many people you have in your group. Um, and when you submit the actual final, I'm going to require the whole thing cut together with like everything that everyone did, uh, basically like the final short. Um, and then I'll grade you individually on the animation. So if you sub it'll basically be a cutting together all of, the cl all of the clips that you worked on, and that's just sort of like what I'll grade you on. Um, and then you also have a grade for like how the, the overall clip came out, if that makes sense. Um, so when you're dividing up this animation, I'll kind of like go through this uh, as you guys, there's like opportunities for me to comment on this when you guys are submitting future assignments, but um, try to divide up the sort of animation burden, if that makes sense. Like, one person can't do all of the action scenes and the other person is just like animating a guy like sitting in a chair being like, sup. Because that's like a wildly different expectation for how things are animated, if that makes sense. Um, so you guys should all be doing like kind of the same amount of like action-y stuff or like challenge in the animation uh, so that one person isn't doing all of the work. Makes sense? Sweet. Um, in terms of the story requirements, um, like I mentioned before, you have two humanoid robots. Uh, what they are should be obvious from their design. If it's like a pirate robot or a chef or like a ninja, whatever, like the design of the robot should tell you that. Uh, and they should have some kind of obvious motivation. So maybe they, one robot like stole something from the other robot. Um, perhaps they're fighting over some kind of source of power. There's two robots, one source of power. They're both, one of them is going to die basically at the end. Um, but it should be obvious from the design of the robots and like what they're doing, why they're there in that particular environment, what they are, and what they're, why they're interacting in the way that they are with each other. Um, and again, there's sort of the, if you can't think of a story, there is the generic, we need power, let's search for it or write over the one power source. If you guys are struggling for, for things, you can kind of fall back on that if you want to. Um, all right, so sort of suggestions to earn more points, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, great. And then I, I usually do note um, in, the, in the assignments themselves, if it's a group assignment, I'll usually say like, this is a group assignment. So basically one person would just submit for the entire group and then I would grade that and you'll all get the grade for that one uh, submission. Um, I have like some, some point breakdowns for the animation, like how the final itself will be graded, but I'm not really uh, looking at those super right now. That's kind of like a later problems thing. Um, so that's basically the, the general gist of the final. Um, does that make sense? Are there any questions on the sort of goal of this project? All right, cool. Uh, let's just see here. So, robot theater, do, 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 do. human and robot, no dialogue, great. All right, so there is, assuming that I can get to this and learn, actually, I, it's on the Google Drive. Um, so if you guys are happen to be on the Google Drive, um, I do have some old presentations in here. Um, and these are just sort of um, mostly presentations that my friend Alexis, who used to teach the class, set up. 
Uh, so I'm going to just like skim through one of them. It says pretty much the same thing on the syllabus, but she has some nice examples of uh, looking at sort of robot design and a few other things. So again, mm, can I zoom in on this? Wait, before I open this Google Slides. Haha. Uh -huh. Still like, come on. All right, well, she has some, some good sort of examples of robot design in here and different sort of contrasts uh, between what you can do. So again, uh, the story and stuff should be obviously obvious by the design of your robot. Um, the other thing I think I forgot to mention was, uh, and I'll probably mention this 18 more times, uh, the whatever robot you end up designing does need to be animated, so it must support a wide range of motion. Uh, so if you have you know, some kind of joint in the arm that can like only move it like out from its side and it can't do any kind of forward, backward, or rotation motion, like that's probably going to be a huge hindrance to your animation. Um, the other thing I think of and kind of laugh is the crazy spiky pauldrons that people always put on like game characters. If you move your arm up, you're going to stab yourself. Like, don't do stuff like that. You know, where you have like a huge shoulder piece and it would like hit the head. Um, so like, just sort of think of that uh, kind of thing when you're designing a robot. And I'll let you know if, if I see anything in your designs that would kind of like red flag, not be able to maybe move in the way that you would need it to. Um, sort of another summary of the robot design guidelines, which we'll go over later. Um, but you just sort of want to look at, sort of decide like what your robot is going to look like. Um, it probably makes sense for you guys to do something kind of similar in style. Uh, for the robots, like for, you know, between each group. Um, so, like, if one person has, like, a really old, crazy, like, broken down old West robot and the other one has, like, a super futuristic one, um, it would need to be obvious in the story, like, why those two robots have been put together. And if that's not clear, then, like, that could potentially be an issue in your story and, like, uh, viewers being able to understand what's going on, if that makes sense. Um, that being said, if you can justify it, go for it. Um, but there's sort of like different examples of like cool, cute, um, different robot designs that can kind of like maybe get you thinking about um, the kind of things that you might like or be interested in. Um, so there's these guys. I kind of like this one actually, where it's like, do you want it to be like superhuman like, or do you like kind of this like abstract? It just sort of like has floppy limbs. Is this what is this from, by the way? Okay, yeah, okay. I've like I've had a feeling it was a Miyazaki movie and I just couldn't remember which one. Um, but yeah, so do you want like, you know, hard edge designs or smooth designs? This is also a good example of um, having sort of like a broken down old Westy robot, not really old Westy, but uh, combined with this like new fancy robot and that was like told really nicely through the story. So like something like Wally -E could potentially be a way to justify that if you guys wanted to go like hardcore stylistic differences with your robots. Um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, different robot designs. I like how she put this one in. Um, but yeah, so this would, um, these guys would be an example of having your robot be obvious what it is from the get-go. So like this one is clearly a police officer. This one is clearly the devil playing a fiddle. Um, and you could, so, wow. If you do just sort of need like generic robots, you can do that too. Like, you know, just, he has no, he's just sort of there. He's not like, a particular role in society, like a police officer, the devil, cook, whatever. Um, generic robots are totally fine. Um, some random examples of miscellaneous sketching. I'll kind of come back to these later, but yeah. So that is pretty much the sort of like robot things to be thinking of. Um, any questions on that? Uh, I do have pretty much, I think, the only other things that I'm really going to go over today. Um, that I'm going to require you guys to stay for is going to be um, going over the assignments and stuff like that that are due. Uh, after that, I'll do a little bit of sort of like ways to model interlocking ball and socket joints and stuff in Maya, and that'll be like an optional if you want to stay for it. Cool. If you don't, feel free to run away. Um, but any questions on that so far? Cool. Um, all right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I kind of, this is like a little bit of a weird, I, I put a bunch of robot information like in the robot doc itself. 
Um, but yeah, it's totally fine. Like if you want to use inspiration from like C3PO or whatever, just don't like totally rip off C3PO and like make C3PO. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like it's kind of insane to ask people to do something <coughs> in this day and age that's like has no outside reference from anything. So that is totally fine. Um, all right, so one thing you guys also, I just like didn't know this existed in Learn until they updated the, the thing. But if you guys go into a calendar, if you have this option for students, um, it'll show you uh, when it loads, when everything is due, which is kind of cool. So it'll show you like when any assignments in Blackboard Learn are due. Um, so if you're ever in question about deadlines for a particular assignment, you can just check this little calendar. If it loads the things, it should tell you when the deadline is. Uh, so like I said, I do have, uh, for this week, there's sort of three assignments slash mini assignments. Um, the first of which is basically sign up for a team. Uh, so if you, this is so slow. Um, but just go to that little groups tab. There's like a bunch of teams pre-made. Um, pick one if you just think the name is funny. They're all pretty much the same. Whatever, you can rename it later. Um, and then there's a little assignment for that uh, under the assignments tab. And just like literally type in who you're working with in the text box. It just gives me something to grade for that. Hey, it lives. Um, so that's pretty much the, the team assignments. And like I said, that is due on Friday, not next Monday. So by Friday or earlier, you should know who you're working with for your final. Uh, and that will give you a chance to actually uh, talk about different story pitches with them uh, and write up your little story pitches, which is the other assignment that is due, uh, which I will find through Blackboard Learn, because there is no way that this is going to be functional. Um, so I have this lovely story pitch and pre-production. Um, so I've, oh yes, I've done a terrible thing. Uh, so the idea pitch is a group project, so you only need one person from your group to submit that. Uh, just I would look it over together though, and just like make sure that everything is like in it. Um, I, when I was doing senior projects, some people would like do group stuff, and they would submit it, and I'm like, I get a grade for this too. Like put more effort into this, grr. Um, so I don't know. Try to avoid that stuff. Make sure everyone's like on the same page with what you're submitting. Um, but basically, you're going to come up with three distinct storylines that use at least two humanoid robots, three if you're in a three-person group. Um, I did write a really sketchy little example pitch, uh, which I'll show you guys in a second. But basically, for each pitch, I want like a uh, too long didn't read or short summary, just like one or two sentences describing what's going on. Something like a robot wakes up, and his roommate makes him burnt waffles, and he gets angry. Um, so like that's what I'm looking at for that. And then a sort of longer version um, that'll give you a chance to plan out more specific actions, like the character wakes up, he hits his alarm, walks down the hallway, that kind of thing. Um, so you'd have, it gives you guys a chance to sort of plot the actions, and it gives the, um, when we look at these in class, it'll give everyone a better idea of like exactly what you're thinking, so there's like less room for people sort of thinking random things that wasn't at all what you're talking about. Um, also for these, uh, if you guys want to just do like really quick sketches of some robots that you would potentially use for the story, um, they don't need to be anything super insanely fancy. Uh, just sort of get an idea of like, oh, I'm looking for like hardcore, like beefy fighting robot versus like adorable child robot, that kind of thing. Um, and then we can, when we look at the story pitches in class, you'll have a chance to also look at the robot designs, and people can give you some preliminary feedback on that as like. The range of motion doesn't quite look uh, look right. What if you you know added some kind of different design to this dude, um, so that when you actually draw your orthographics and start modeling, um, you'll have some feedback under your belt already to keep in mind, and you can use that to sort of update your design if you need to. Um, also, just like a really quick bullet point list of physical requirements that the robot that would be like required by the story for the robot. Um, so I'm just sort of assuming that your robots can do like a basic range of motion, but like I need them to be able to, you know, eat a burnt waffle that would require presumably some kind of jaw or like mouth furnace or something like that. Um, and then also just like another really quick bullet point list of just like concerns about the pitch. So if you were going with like waffle mouth furnace and you're like, I have no idea how to make fire, that would be something you would maybe want to put in that pitch so that people can give you ideas about what to do. Um, and it might be as simple as just sort of like put a little hatch in the mouth and then like a blinking light behind it kind of thing. Uh, so this is what's required, again, for each pitch. 
the the sketches of the robot are sort of like per person. So that would be you know which uh, which robot design each person was thinking about. Everything else is sort of like group stuff. Um, and again, here's a note: if you guys want to add extra robots, I'm not going to stop you. Just be aware of scope creep is is a thing. Um, so I would say if you're going to do extra robots, make sure that if you're concerned about getting them done, make sure that they're not like integral to your story. And if they're just sort of like cute little extra things that you could add in if you have time at the end, like that would be kind of awesome, if that makes sense. Um, any questions on that? All right. Um, so I do have some suggestions for easy remoting um, uh, in terms of like getting the most performance out of your character. So. At least one eyeball, that's actually a requirement. Um, eyebrows will also get you a lot of emotion in your character, some kind of perhaps like an eyelid uh, or a light uh, either behind the eye or like indicating power level, that kind of thing. Um, and I would recommend at least doing some kind of like claw hand that have like a basic two finger sort of like Mr. Krabs claw functionality because otherwise like you could, you could technically do a robot with like shovel hands if his primary purpose is to like shovel dirt. It kind of just like depends on what makes sense for your story. Just be in mind, like, if you make Shovel Hand dude and you're like, ooh, I need to have him pick things up, maybe that's like part of his part of his allure. Like he can't pick things up, so he just sort of has to like try to scoop them and it's like very awkward for him. Um, but again, just sort of like whatever whatever makes sense for your story. I'm not gonna put a lot of like hard requirements on it past it needs to be humanoid, bipedal, and have an eyeball. Um, but yeah. Um, and just like a weird additional note, again, if for some reason you can't get a hold of your teammate, um, submit whatever you can uh, and let me know that you weren't able to get a hold of them for like their sketches or whatever. Uh, I'll figure that out later. Um, point breakdown for this is it's worth six points total. Um, so three pitch ideas, each pitch idea is worth one point. And the sort of sketches, range of motion and concerns uh, are also worth one point for each of those ideas. Um, and then I have some descriptions about like what to look for for that. Um, so that's pretty much this assignment. Um, if you could submit um, one PDF for each ideal, uh, each idea. So, uh, so, so submit me uh, three individual PDFs. Do not zip them together, and each PDF should have all of the stuff under the requirements. Just like organize it. It doesn't need to be super fancy. And again. For like the physical requirements and bullet point lists, I really don't need paragraphs. Like literal bullet point lists are totally fine. Um, that's pretty much the storyboard and like pre-production stuff. Uh, idea pitch that's due next week. Any questions on that before we break into the sample sample pitch? All right. Cool. So I've not done any sketches for this, um, but I do I do have this sort of like. Too long didn't read version, which is again basically the robot with with pancakes. Uh, so the longer version would be, you know, again, I'm not going to like sit here and read this entire thing to you because that would be mean. Um, but it just goes into more detail about uh, exactly what the robot's doing. Maybe you know if he's like scratching his head, that kind of thing. Um, go into detail about if the robot's angry, like ah, oh, I, I helped you make. Basically, they end up cooking, and he helps his robot. He helps his roommate make pancakes and like cut up strawberries and stuff. And the robot takes all of the stuff that he made, like all the strawberries he cut and all the whipped cream that he whipped, and the two nice pancakes, and leaves him with like two fried frisbee discs of bread. And he's like super angry about that. And he's like, "What the heck? And, like, how does he express that anger?" Um, I think I think he actually goes through in this and like walks into the other room, like grabs his roommate's head and like shoves the burnt pancakes into it violently and then like walks away. Um, but basically this is just sort of like the detailed version again. Um, basically summarize everything in words so that you can kind of see it. Um, and then here's like, again, uh, required range of motion. So like this guy, if he's, if he's you know, waking up, uh, he will need to have some kind of changes in eye state, whether that's opening or closing an eyelid. Um, he has like a little light that like blinks on, that kind of thing for his eyeball. Um, roommate will at least require some kind of hand to hold like a spatula, a pan, etc. Uh, and there will need to be some kind of mouth or food hatch. 
for the burnt pancakes to be violently shoved into. Um, so this is what I say about like uh, range of motion required by the story. You don't need to be like, robot can walk. Um, so it's, it would literally just be things that are mandated by whatever you've written up here. Um, in terms of like concerns, this would just be, I can, I can attest to the fact that like cutting things up is really annoying. So like if there's a way, there, I mentioned like chopping strawberries, that kind of thing. Um, I think I also mentioned whipping whipped cream. So you'd probably want to find ways or like get opinions about um, ways that you could either do this or avoid showing the actual like, ro uh, the actual robots being cut up, the actual strawberries being like sliced individually. Um, basically that kind of thing. Uh, and that's really apart from the, the sketches, that is pretty much all I'm looking for for the, uh, the little pitches. Um, so hopefully they're kind of fun to write. I also just like threw in some like weird ideas. I was like, ah, you can kind of like change change the overall feel of this. Like if they weren't in, if they weren't using you know a typical bed, um, you could make it some kind of weird, insane like dystopian uh, thing where they like plug into some creepy like power charger thing with like cables hanging everywhere. And instead of making like cutesy pancakes. Um, they would be, you know, fighting over scrap metal or something like that. And like the other robot gives him like terrible scrap metal and it's like not enough to do whatever he needs. Like, so you can kind of like same basic idea, but you can kind of like change it to, to fit the different feels and stuff, like whatever you want to go for. Um, yeah. Or you could apparently turn the sleeping robot into a slave robot. Uh, I tend to take cute ideas and make them really dark and macabre and just kind of weird. Um, but yeah, so that's, that is like the story pitch. And that is due next week on Monday when you guys come in. Are there any questions about that? Cool. Um, so I think blah, story pitches. OK. Yes. Um, so really quick, this is not due next week. It's due next Friday. Um, and that's, but that's your robot orthographics. So for the first two weeks, you do have sort of like weird half assignments due on Friday. Um, and the only reason that I'm, I'm having you submit them early is so that you have, I'll grade them when you guys submit them and you guys will have a chance to work on your models before the next week. Um, Cause I don't want to limit you guys to only a week to working on the models if you need more time. Um, so advise you like an extra two days. Um, wait for it. Uh, so really quick, I'm just going to go over the sort of ro uh, robot orthographics and biography about the robot. Um, again, this is not due next week. Um, I just want to go over it because it does have some more information about the robot and that kind of thing in it. Um, so again, I say, make sure that he is physically capable of moving in whatever way you need him to for your animation. Um, also make sure that he has like enough capability to emote. Um, one thing that I suggest a lot of times is not requirements. I just think it makes it a little bit easier to animate. Um, if break the torso up into like two parts. So instead of us having like a solid brick, uh, that can pretty much like only like a rectangle that can only rotate back and forth. If you can get like a little bit of bend in it, um, it gives it a, it gives a good way to sort of force more ex uh, animation and like secondary motion in there. Um, but also sometimes it can help make the poses feel a little bit more fluid. So if I'm if I'm a robot and I'm standing here and like I can only move, I'm trying to like bend down to pick something up or like bend sideways. Imagine I'm trying to do like a pose where it's like, ooh, look at me, I'm like relaxed or whatever, just like leaning on a table or something. If I can only move, I like can't bend my torso at all, it's gonna look really stiff no matter what you do. And it's just gonna be like kind of awkward. By being able to bend the torso, you get a little bit more range of motion from that character. So like, like things to think about um, when, you're, when you're designing your characters. Um, they don't need to be like totally matching a human body obviously, but like, I don't know. I like I like the option to at least bend that if I need to. And if you don't, you can just leave it stiff. Um, but basically, again, so requirements for Roma. Um, humanoid, bipedal. Um, it must stand upright and walk on two legs. Don't do any robot horses or robot sharks, um, unless they're your extra robots. In which case, horse is probably overscoping, but you could totally do a robot shark. Um, it does require a head with some form of eyeball in it. Um, you could do one eyeball, you could do 30. I don't really care, it just needs some kind of eyeball. Um, and then there is uh, one element of smooth skin binding. So that would be um, like a, a squishy piece in your robot. Uh, so something that's not like a stiff piece of metal. That could be cables, that could be um, 
for some reason I'm really into the idea of like having a robot with like a giant balloon head or something that like if he's angry it like flops up and forth or something or like functions as lungs. I don't know. Just like be, be, be fun to do with any cloth. But uh, you need something that is sort of like smooth skin. That could also just be like a long chain of, of sort of slithery joints. Uh, if that makes sense, that you can just sort of bend back and forth, and it's like more sort of fluid looking. Um, I'll let you guys know like more stuff about that later. But again, make sure it can move the way you need to, blah, blah, blah. Um, again, robot, what it is should be obvious from the design. If it needs to serve the function of like a police officer or something like that, how is it doing that from the design? If it's a ninja, how is it doing that from the design? Um, and this is the bit where I'm like, you can't make C3PO, but if you want to use him for information or for inspiration, go for it. Um, other things that I kind of are like optional if you want to put them in, great. Uh, if you don't, fine. Um, eyebrows, mouth moving jaw, fingers, that kind of thing. Um, I mostly am just looking for, if you want to like rip a robot's arm off or something like that, like you're also welcome to. Like as far as I'm concerned, he could have 30 arms and he could have one arm. It really doesn't matter. He just needs two legs to walk on. And the only reason that is um, a sort of rule that's being enforced is this is presumably the first time that a lot of you guys have animated human characters and being able to copy the reference more directly and presumably all of you have two legs um, is going to make your life much, much easier and you don't need to worry so much about how is this like weird body type gonna function? It's just sort of like, let me practice sort of copying this animation onto my robot figure and just like refining the animation rather than, ooh, I made a trash monster that walks on his hands and has piston legs. How does that work? Fun fact, that's what I did for mine when I did this. Um, I can actually, mm. Uh, that voice always gets crackly and insane when I start to <laughs> Okay. Hey, it's returned. Okay. My voice always gets really weird because when I don't teach, I like pretty much just sit in my room all day and do freelance stuff and don't talk. So that was fun. Um, but yeah. All right. And I'm not going to go over like the, the requirements for the graphic right now because it's not really relevant. But um, this, again, does sort of have more information about what's required specifically for the robot if you guys need to uh, think about that or look at that for your stories or sketches this week. Uh, any questions on that? Cool. Um, so let me see if I can bust in. I don't know why I keep trying to look at learn. It's just not working right now. But that's why I have Google Drive. Um, so I have, um, I'm just going to play one or two examples of previous student work for you guys. Um, there's more links to stuff in the syllabus. Um, so this is sort of like giving you an example of, you know, what kind of stuff would be, you'd be shooting for for your final. In this case, like they have a really nice environment design. The, the robot design kind of feels like it fits in with the background. Um, and you will notice, if you look at those cables on the inside, uh, that's the smooth skinning for this robot. I'm also not entirely sure when these are from, because they, they changed the, the requirements for the assignment. Like, this didn't used to be a group project, it used to be like one person, one robot kind of thing. Um, so this might have been like one person just doing both robots. I'm not entirely sure. But you can see like, um, okay. Okay. Um, but you can see like how much emotion, like the, the little eyelids on the, on the dude, um, how much extra expression that gives him. Uh, the fact that he can blink and he can make sort of different shapes with his eyes helps a lot. I really like the scenery in this one. I think it's super pretty. Um, so that's like one example of previous student work. Um, here is. Ah, ooh. Another one. Play. This one I, I like the. I think I feel like they've actually used like CG textures. Textures like I know I know those textures, but they've. Um, done a nice job so like you can see the different specular highlights and like the subtle bump maps and stuff 
Uh, in the environment, they've added a little bit of uh, environmental fog to get that nice light beam in there. Actually, rewatching this one again, I feel like there's a lot of like the <laughs> like the little grate in the mouth could totally flap back and forth. I think my my main thing that I thought was weird about that one is the way he stops in midair. Like he just he's like whoop, nope. And I was like, I want to see some kind of like hard thing. If he hit like a wall or like something, but like that, I don't know. That kind of broke it for me. But like the rest of it, like it's it's. It's not obvious why the little dude was thrown in prison, but it's obvious like he's in prison, he's trying to escape. Um, and this is an example of, it doesn't really matter what the robot is, it's just sort of like, need generic dude. What? Like, it doesn't matter what it is, it escape. Yeah, he's, he's just, he's just a, a sad, imprisoned, adorable little robot. Um, but yeah, so like, I think there's other, you can see people's um, past robot designs as well. So these would be like uh, examples of sort of uh, orthographics people have done. And uh, what I want to note about these, I feel like I know the person who made this design. I feel like that was from my ear, but I don't remember. Anyway, um, but they have a good range of motion. So they have like little fingers if they need to pick the fingers up. Uh, they have clearly defined joints in the knees. So you can see like these are mechanical objects, like you should Probably, if you have it, if you don't know things about like different types of joints, it might not be a bad idea to like look up, um, you know, even like how toys are articulated. That'll give you a lot of different ideas and like information on different joint types. Um, but they have like so for the arms, they have ball and socket joints because that's going to give you a larger range of motion uh, than these little hinge joints on the knees, that kind of thing. Um, there's nothing inherently weird and or like there's no geometry that would like super impede motion in these um so they're going to be a little bit easier to animate there's also some examples of things that were tagged as problematic some of these i don't see as like inherently terrible um i will say that this is not a good quality photo um if you guys when you were doing any assignments if you're like taking pictures of sketches please do make sure that the quality is better than this uh, don't have giant shadows and horribly exposed areas on your images. Um, but the issue, there's like, so they have ball and socket joints on the shoulders, but these like weird sort of pauldron things are pretty much going to limit the arm. It's only going to be able to move up at like a 90 degree angle. So if it needs to raise its hands above its head, it's not going to be able to. Um, and it's also going to constrict motion a little bit uh, forward in the body. Um, this again, it has ball and socket joints, but like whatever this is, is going to like pretty dramatically uh, reduce the, the range of motion there. Kind of sort of the same thing for the knees. Um, this is a little weird. So I, it, I think actually has a pretty decent range of motion, except it wouldn't be able to move its legs sideways. I don't know if you guys can even see that. The issue that I would tag with this is, unless it's like part of the bit or part of the allure of your robot, looking at this sideways, you can't see it. It's literally just a stick. <laughs> um, which, again, unless, unless you're doing like the, the stick bug bit from Bugs Life, where you're like, I'm just a stick, um, this is probably going to cause some visual, visual problems of people actually finding your robot in the scene if it's like depending on what your background is and what, like, what the texturing on your robot's like. Um, and just kind of like more of more of that, um, but yeah. So I'm. That's pretty much all the stuff that's due. So again, team assignments are due on Friday, and story pitches are due on Monday, and there's a group assignment. Um, that is pretty much all of the stuff I have for you guys. Um, so if anybody, we'll take a break, and if anybody wants to stay, I can do some just like sort of random impromptu demos about. Um, joint information, like how to make different types of joints that interlock with each other properly. Um, I'll also, if I can find it, show you guys my final from this class. If you guys are interested, it's like two minutes long and terrible, but it seems like people enjoy seeing that kind of thing. So yeah. Um, so we'll take a break. If you want to come back in five minutes, we'll do those things. If not, feel free to run away.